Greetings. Hey, that's Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. And I'm doing something here. And uh, when I when I come across something that I think is kind of interesting, I'll say to myself, well, I should make a video about this. And then I'll keep working. And I think, well, this ties into this. And if I had a, a group of people that I was here and I was mentoring, this is what I would say. So it's a good thing I have a phone because I like to get this stuff out. So we've been talking lately about honing our operations, making things better, you know, making it easier, um, more efficient, um, bringing our skill level up. It's sort of what you'd call Robert Freeman as fortifying your position. When nothing's happening, fortify your position, fill sandbags, make it better, you know, make your sleeping a little bit better, make your, you get the picture. All right. So I'm, uh, I'm kind of at the end of my butchering for this season. And we've been talking about that too. We've been talking about, um, working within the seasons, you know, a season for everything. And there's a lot of reasons why you want to do things in certain reasons and not back up, you know, like I had somebody call this week. Oh, I've got chickens that need to be processed. No, we're done with that for the year. And oh, I've got turkeys that need. Nope, we're done. We finished on this date and we make it very well known that that's when we finish. And then we move into pigs for the year. And I also had some beef that I had to do this year. So anyway, so anyway what I'm doing right now is I'm finishing up one of the last pigs that I will do this year. We uh, killed this one on the day before yesterday. And then yesterday I cut up 80% of it. And then today I had to come up and fin come in and finish up in between my chores and then some work electrical work that I need to do this afternoon. So uh, one of the things I had to do was I had to break down this loin and you can see that's a, a log that I got from a friend of mine out in Ohio. And so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm making chops, right? So I'm, I'm using my handy um, cleaver. And, uh, you know, a really good skilled butcher could just go chop and he could knock a piece off. And that would be a chop. That's where the term comes from. So I made a couple of them and I looked at them and I thought, wow, those are really phenomenal looking chops. Okay. So I thought I would show this and talk a little bit about the Mangalitsa and why it is so special. You look at that. Okay. So what you're seeing is intermuscular fat, this fat in between the muscle groups. And this big muscle, the one in the middle is the loin and that goes down either side of the backbone. All right. So we've cut these that thick and there is a rib in each one. So I'm not, you can see, I'm not using a band saw the way this is done with a saw is you set the fence on the saw for seven eighths. And whether it goes through a bone or whether it just goes through meat, it doesn't matter. You're cutting all your chops at seven in. But I don't like that because I like to have a solid bone, rib bone in each chop. So it puts the chop at about one inch. This was a 400 pound animal close to two years old or maybe just two years old. All right. Um, now what I want to expound on here a little bit is that intermuscular fat is what makes a piece of meat worth eating. Show you a little bit better light. See, the Mangalitsa is known for intermuscular fat and it's what makes them so, so good to eat. And you can see the meat is really red and the fat is snow white. All right. So this animal wasn't fed any, corn or any soy at all. And one of the upsides of the Mangalitsa is they can make really good meat and fat off of just about anything. So what have they have had? They've had um, 
day old bread, but the good stuff, really good stuff, as much as they can eat. And then, you know, if you check our other videos out, we have them on fields that we actually grow crops for them. And then they do the harvest on those crops. So I grow a lot of turnips, grow a lot of field peas, uh, rye, uh, daikon radishes, forage radishes. Um, I sometimes do grow corn, but uh, it would be open pollinated corn, not the real grungy, you know, genetically modified stuff. And usually they're eating it before it even gets dried or anything. They just take the stock right down. And it's real good forage for them. So that fat, you know, this, this, big, this big drive in our country that fat is bad. No, fat is good. But if it's fat that's derived from really cheap sources, like the really cheap GMO corn that they grow that smells like, smells like Mountain Dew to me, um, that fat is bad because it's, it's, it's a mono, um, a mono product. It's the fat source is coming from one thing and it's fat. So pigs that are raised in confinement, they're getting almost primarily corn to eat. They get corn and soy and then there's some other stuff that they mix in there, but that's it. These pigs that are outside, the way they're designed to operate is they are uh, an omnivore. So they, they'll look for protein, they'll look for uh, carbohydrates. And if you give them an environment where they can find that, they will. So the fields that they're on, you know, we cultivate them for them. They go through, they harvest everything, they're digging in, they're making holes and everything but they're doing the work for me, right? Planting a field is not a big deal. Harvesting, getting it off when, and you want all the product to be about the same size, that's a trick, that's a trick right there. So I didn't have to do that. Um, I see my son is watching, Sam Baker, and he's watching from Yokota Air Base in Japan, which was my first duty assignment many moons ago, like 30 something years ago, I was stationed there. It was my first duty assignment. So how are you doing, Sam? I usually don't say anything to people when they chime in because I get distracted, but uh, Sam has done a lot of work here to make this whole operation work that goes back years, building fences and, and other things that we have in place, building this shop too. So this is the culmination of it. You're still here in a lot of ways, but, um, yeah, so the fat on, on that chop that you're just looking at is not bad. It is actually good. It's fat that comes from hay, from forages, from the grains that they use to make the bread. It's, it's good. It's good fat. So when you, when you eat it, you'll say, wow, this, this tastes really good. It doesn't just taste like the, the, the fat and pork and beans, you know. So I'll show you a piece of the back fat that was trimmed off. You know, we leave a little bit of fat on, but here's a piece of the back fat that I trimmed off. And this will be ground and then rendered. Some of it will just stay in sticks like that and the customer wants it. You know, you just keep it in your fridge and when you're gonna cook something, you cut it off, cube it up, throw it in the pan first and then, um, you know, you do green beans like that and they're just really to kill for. So that's uh, what I wanted to show and I'm not going to get a chance to show this again for quite a while, probably next year at this time because I'm going to be done butchering. I have one more pig to do next Wednesday and that's going to be it for the year. So this is what you can produce with a mangalitsa, with a mangalitsa pig. Outstanding. This is chops. And uh, this is not exactly our favorite cut off the pig. Our favorite cut for our family is the collar steak, which is a little bit further up, closer to the head. It's a, a little bit bigger muscle because it gets used to, uh, to move the head and all the digging and stuff that they do. Anyway, that was what I wanted to pass on. 
Um, if you want to join us uh, Wednesday nights, we do our anyone can farm slash tribe uh, call in question and answer and it's on YouTube. So if you go to Baker's Green Acres YouTube, you can find it eight o'clock Eastern time. And that way you can fire questions at us and we can get it out there because I really can't um, answer all the questions that I get. Uh, just one onesies coming in uh, and I wind up answering questions over and over again. So, you know, come to the, the live chat, ask the question, and then we can get those questions out to more and more people. Okay. Press on.